you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. I'm going to pass around this paper. Please, if you come up with a question, please write it down so you don't forget. And you can have a chance to ask me at the end. My project is do's and don'ts of camping. Well, sorry, my speech title is do's and don'ts of camping. My project is question and answers. <clears throat> I'm going to share with you my personal experiences of uh, do's and don'ts of camping. It may not be exactly what you find on Google, but it's what I experienced personally. And, uh, <clears throat> so for when you want to go camping, first thing you have to do is find out if think about where you want to go and find out if there are any availabilities in that area. There are some campgrounds areas that they book in a one year in advance. Through the years we've been camping, we found out that there are people who book their campgrounds minimum of three months in advance sometimes six months, or like some other places, one year in advance. There's one place we've been wanting to go, we've never had a chance, because every time we call, it's always booked. There's a place in Santee, Santee Lake. There are cabins that are right on top of the water. The cabin is actually, they're chained to the, um, to the surface, to, to the ground but they're actually floating on top of the water. It's very cool, we've been there, we've seen it, we've never been able to book. <laughs> Every time we call, they say it's full. It was full a year in advance. <laughs> so it's good to find out um, if there are availabilities. <clears throat> then, once you this once you book your uh, your campsite your campground, you have to find you have to get your gears together. Make sure you have all the right gears. The very first time Alex and I went camping, we someone loaned us a tent. Uh, we didn't have a tent at the time, so someone said, "Here, I will loan you a tent. You want to go camping?" So we got excited, we didn't check, we just took the bag and we went. Luckily we got to our, we checked into our campsite early, it was still daylight. We opened the bag, we took the tent out, there were no sticks. <laughs> so, <laughs> we ended up going to Walmart buying a brand new <laughs> tent. So it's a good idea to Make sure you have all the gears before you go. <clears throat> At campgrounds, there are certain rules. A lot of campgrounds, you can, uh, they have a special area for, for fire. You, you build a fire, uh, you have a fire pit that you can build your fire in. There are some areas that are fire hazard, they don't allow you to build fire. So it's, they will tell you that when you check in that you're not allowed to have any fires there, but we've never been to those areas. All the areas we've been to, you're allowed to have fire. Some areas like Yosemite, they have restrictions that certain, certain time, the fire needs to be out, you need to be quiet. Uh, it's basically the quiet time. But other areas we've been to campaign, there are no restrictions. You leave your fire on, you can leave it overnight, um, but uh, not a big fire, of course. But you said let it um, just die out overnight till morning.
for um, firewood. At every campground, they do sell firewood. But if you have trees at home, you cut down your trees, it's always good to keep those and be able to take them. Because they sell about maybe a bunch like that for about $5. Or if you have those, it's uh, cost effective. There are different types of campaign. There are three different types. There is the regular campaign, the tent, you put up a tent. There is cabin camp, uh, campaign, which you can rent out cabins. Now, some of the cabins, they're very, very glamorous. That um, basically they have everything. It's like moving into another home like taking your home <laughs> somewhere else. But uh, it's completely filled with, there's a bed, there's kitchen, and uh, I've heard people call, some people they call them glamping, which is that's for a glamorous camping, and they try to stay far away as real camping, which is, if you, but, <clears throat> Uh, there's also RV, RV camping, which is recreational vehicle. If you do own one, then going to camping is probably not that much more expensive than a real regular uh, tent camping. But if you don't own one, renting it, it could cost between $150 to $400 per day to rent an RV. To purchase one, it's um, about maybe $300,000, two to $300,000 to purchase one. They're pretty expensive. And depending on the style and what amenities or things that he has inside the RV. But personally, I like the tent camping. It's more in the nature. You're, um, it's, you feel the nature a lot better. You, you're sleeping inside the tent, you're in fresh air, and you're getting away from our regular life and electricity and all the uh, technology that we use every day. We're trying to get away from that. Now I'd like to open for uh, any questions, if anyone has. Yes? Have you ever been out camping and someone in your group gets hurt? And if so, what did you do? Yes. We went, it was a day camping. Well, it was one night, overnight camping at Lake, uh, Lake Poway. We were camping with another group, with another family who had kids. Uh, their daughters, maybe a few years older than our kids. And the kids were running and the girl, she twisted her ankle and her ankle broke. So they ended up cutting their trip short, and they rushed her to emergency for her um, to have it healed. But this was last year. And she's okay. She was in a cast for for quite some time. But uh, yes, it was it was sad to see her their trip cut short and that she got hurt. Yes. This lake with the houseboats floating is set by Santee? Yes, Santee Lake. Huh. Yes. What do you do? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. What okay. Do you, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for meals? How do you plan and how do you preserve the meals? And okay, that's a good question. Um, for meals. Fast food. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we take ice chest with us. We usually we take the places we've been camping. 
it's been closer to the city. Uh, Lake Paris was one of the areas which is very close to the city. So we usually, we take for the first uh, meals. So we have the dinner of that day. We either get something on the way or we buy meat um, to barbecue or um, meat or chicken. We put it on ice. We have breakfast, um, things ready for breakfast, eggs. We usually, there are cases that you can put the eggs in and it stays uh, safe. We put them on, on ice. And um, for lunch as well. And then for the second day, following days, we can always go purchase. Or we've done, we went camping to Yosemite. We stayed right just outside of Yosemite. Over there, we did fishing. We did first day, it was a river that we did fishing. We went stood there for half an hour. We got two fish. We for breakfast, we had fish. <laughs> then we went back for lunch. We caught another two fish for lunch. And then same thing for dinner. After that first day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we had fish. We said, okay, now we are fished out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the find the market. <laughs> but uh, we, we've done uh, fishing for meals, and you can also take food with you, uh, but you need to keep it on ice chest. Now, one other thing about food. There are areas that there are bears, and they know what an ice chest is for. <laughs> and they know that there's food in there. So at night, before you go to sleep, the areas that there are bears, you need to hide the ice chest inside the car and make sure it's covered and not visible. Because if they wow. see it inside the car, they will literally take the door off the hinge wow. in front of the car. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And um, on the food, uh, also, make sure there are no foods on the ground. Or around, because they smell it, and they come. We were camping the same Yosemite. We didn't see any bears. But one night we slept. In the morning, everyone was talking about the bear that came, the bear that came. I'm saying, what bear? I didn't hear anything until I went to throw something in the dumpster. Now, they're dumpsters, they're huge dumpsters that the whole thing is metal. The top is also metal that are bolted in the middle. You can only open it this much to push your garbage in. That lid, that top, was folded halfway up. <laughs> so, the only thing that could have done that was a bear. <laughs> we didn't see it, but we saw evidence that there was a bear. Ricky, you had a question. Carol did take my question, but it's a great question. <laughs> uh, the second question, I guess, a follow-up is, I can't imagine going sleeping at night, because at daytime where you go camping, it's nice and warm, but if you stay overnight somewhere, especially under tent, mm -hmm. it's really cold and the dew gets not comfortable. So what do you recommend to keep warm and comfortable through the night in the tent? Okay, that's a good question, how to keep warm. I do recommend taking an air bed because there's nothing worse than going to bed and feeling these little lumps of rock under your back. <laughs> we've tried putting mats, we've tried putting phones, the only thing that actually works is the air mattress, <laughs> which is now for sleeping, for keeping warm, you can either take sleeping bags or you can just take blankets, keep it cost less. If you do have sleeping bags, that's great. Some of them are pretty warm. You can just go in there and zip it up and you'll stay warm. But other ones are kind of thinner they don't have that much heat. But um, you can take your own covers, like bed sheets and covers from home, and keep warm that way. My yes. daughter camps frequently, and they're fortunate enough to get, fairly often, to get the 
but they have several friends, and they all call up at the date. What is there a certain date that they are open for camping a month ahead of time? Or something? Yes, there are places that they're open year round, but there are some other places that they are closed during winter time, and they're only open during summer. Those uh, in. Um, uh, by Julian, those the, uh, there are places to camp by Julian. There are two campsites. One of them do have cabins. The other one does not. And they are open a year all year round. During winter time, you can stay in the cabin. They have heaters there. You come out of the cabin. There's snow everywhere. And uh, but we've stayed in those cabins in during um, summertime which we didn't need a heater but personally I don't like cabins because the experience we had it was room four walls there were bunk bed bottom top and it was just wood there was nothing on it of course there are some other cabins that there are a lot more in there, but they we haven't experienced those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where is the most remote place that you've ever camped with like no nothing? You had to hike out or just more remote, no city, no store. Okay. We have been to Big Bear mm -hmm. and it was really nice. Driving up there if, uh, actually, um, Big Bear, uh, there is one other place that the height was really. Uh, it, it, uh, what is it called? Um, Silverwood Lake, which is right here, in, very close to us, but it's the highest reservoir in Southern California. And when we were driving there, it was really beautiful because we basically we passed the clouds and we were driving, it was going around the mountain and we would look down and we would see the top of the clouds. <laughs> it was kind of a neat experience because we just basically drove right through the clouds and over them. But the farthest distance that was most farthest from civilization was Big Bear. Um, Errol, did you have a question? Uh, I did. I noticed you're almost out of time. Uh, have you guys ever tried to start a fire without matches or a lighter? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, and no, we uh, have not tried that. That would be a good experience. I know my kids have tried <laughs> doing that, but no, we haven't. And if anyone has more questions, I will be more than happy to answer them after our meeting. Mr. Yes. President.